Uh, what's poppin', ladies and gentlemen? It's your man, Just Jay Sam. I'm back with another uh, podcast episode nobody asked for. That's right, Canon Culture, the uh, premier uh, entertainment commentary podcast that nobody asked for. Um, but I have a special guest today, and um, hopefully, we're doing a little trial run. Hopefully, my man uh, decides to stick around. I'm here with uh, the <laughs> mysterious man himself, the master of disaster, my man, Plank. What's going on? What's up? What's up? How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Oh man, you know what? I'm very excited. I'm I'm it took me a while to to land on on you specifically uh for <laughs> for a possible co-host. So I I want to thank you for coming on today's show by the way. No, uh, the I, the pleasure is mine. Oh, the pleasure is mine. Trust me, you going to wish it wasn't. Um <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh today we got a we got a bunch of topics to talk about, but um I want my man Plank to introduce himself a little bit. Just give you know a little two two three sentence uh you know this is this is me this is what i do type of beat go hi i'm plank i do random shit on the internet i'm just some guy that's it there you go that was three sentences that's all you could ask <laughs> oh, for. i'm sorry <laughs> that's it that's all you that's all you really needed if you guys want to find uh plank uh i have his twitch link down in the description if you're listening to the audio version of today's podcast make sure you go over to the youtube channel youtube.com slash just sama of course you can find all of my all of the homies there um and then also uh we also started back live streaming every single week now so if you guys weren't aware we're live streaming monday tuesdays and thursdays at 8 p.m pacific standard time um it's actually interesting because we're supposed to be live streaming right now which is uh, so interesting but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stream at this exact moment wow i didn't realize what time it was um (laughs) (laughs) so uh let's go ahead and jump into today's podcast um i like to not so this is one thing i i don't like to do on my podcast is talk about marvel every single week but Mm. this was actually pretty significant um in a report uh tom holland was actually talking about uh the script for spider-man 3 and apparently he's saying that there is no toby Maguire, no andrew garfield as far as he knows unless they've kept that from him but it uh seems pretty consistent with the amount of stuff that tom holland has revealed beforehand tom holland hasn't revealed he's he's shown some stuff on on his instagram live a couple of times by accident so you know he can't he's not exactly a trustable source uh so you can't exactly trust him with you know the with the company secrets and everything like that so you know i think it's i think it's very interesting i wasn't really uh i'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna, this is where I decide to throw my opinion in for absolutely no reason. And Plank, go ahead and feel free to jump in whatever you feel like it. Um, of course. I don't... I'm starting to not care about Spider-Man 3. And this is just me, mm. my, me personally saying this because I think there's got, not going to be any more reveals. Uh, like when you go to see the movie and everything's already spoiled for you. Like, you already know they're going to have a Green Goblin cameo. They're going to have Willem Dafoe. They're going to have Sandman. They're going to have fucking Harry Osborn. They're going to have all this other stuff from Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, like, making small cameos. I assume they're going to be, like, cuts in between dimensions because it's supposed to be the multiverse, uh, madness of multiverse, multiverse of madness or some shit like that is supposed to connect yeah. to Spider-Man 3. Uh, so I assume that's what that is. Um, and, uh, for those of you guys who haven't seen WandaVision, um, there was actually a pretty big reveal this past week, um, revealing that the X-Men may also finally be assimilated into the MCU. And I remember, uh, Kevin Feige was saying, um, I think it was on an Age of Ultron, um, director's, director's edition or whatever, and he was given some commentary, um, and they were showing BTS footage and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, I would love to uh create a universe where the x-men and the avengers could fight each other so i really think he's if there's anybody that's going to successfully assimilate the uh x-men into the mcu i think he's going to do it really well so um but then there was like also this report that keanu reeves is going to play craven so we're just what the fuck yeah there's just too many there's just too many things going on in this in this movie and honestly i it's making me disinterested by how many people are just like, oh, this person's going to be in it, this person's going to be in it, because it's like, oh, yeah, how much are you going to reveal? Like, there's already talks of, like, all three Spider-Men coming back, there might be Spider-Gwen, fucking Miles Morales, like, all this other shit, and I'm like, uh, 
This sounds like Twitter's a, already seen the movie, bro. Like, no honestly, cap. they've seen the movie. Twitter wrote the movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is not this is not cool. So I don't really, I I, I think it's it's doing a little bit too much. Um, a lot of people are saying they should really just drop a trailer. I personally, mm. for something this hype, for something that has been built up this much, I actually don't want a trailer at all. No, me either. I I want a teaser, you know, like a little thirty second, you know, slide or whatever. Like we thought we were gonna see something at the Super Bowl, but I think there's still the Pro Bowl to come up. And then no, the Pro still, Bowl was already Bowl, done. It was yeah. it was streamed on Twitch. That's right. What the fuck? That's weird. Yeah, um, it was it was weird. It's the Rose Bowl, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So we might get something for that. Um, you know, then. I don't know. Apparently, they're doing the Tokyo Olympics this year because they're like, fuck COVID. So, which yeah, sounds yeah. like the dumbest shit in the world to me. But, I mean, I guess. Here we whatever. go. Here's another six months. Yeah, it, it is what it is, man. So, uh, I'm not I'm not particularly hyped for it. I think the, the movie is being blown way out of proportion. Um, I just I just want Spider-Man 3 to come out. Like, because I've, I've enjoyed the last two movies. I think Spider-Man Homecoming actually was my... I think I would put that as my number one Spider-Man movie. Out of all of them, it was a great movie. I was I, just, I, I was blown away by the visual effects. That's that's just me. Oh so, yeah. They they really they showed up on that one. Like that's they showed up. They haven't showed up like that in a while, but they showed up. Like one hundred percent. It seems um, one thing that once again I really really enjoyed was uh, that they really really went hardcore for Mysterio. I thought mm. never in my lifetime would we see. A uh, a depiction of Mysterio so good, I never oh, yeah. I never would have thought it like at all. So he's pretty under under underrated for Spider Man villains to be honest. Like you would have expected a, a lot more people. Like I would have thought Craven over Mysterio for sure. Oh yeah, Craven's yeah, yeah, so definitely. big. Yeah, he's he's huge. I mean, I don't think they're gonna pass up the opportunity to to, to drop Venom either because I think mm. it was. No, that was um, Spider-Man: The Game. Yeah, um, at the end with the symbiote. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna. We're getting into space aliens now, and so like the whole totality of the MCU is already changing. So I think going into Phase Four, they're already kind of stacked. So I don't. I don't particularly. I don't particularly see Venom coming anytime soon. We got. I feel like there's too much Spider-Man to develop with what they're they're currently doing, to just drop Venom, right? Because we already getting his solo Venom solo movies. We're That's getting Venom right. Too, if I if I recall. Yeah, Venom too. I I honestly because there's been so much Spider-Man hype, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> I forgot about Venom too. Um, and then there's you know I do want to see the two Toms fight, so that'd be that'd be pretty cool. So we already have an established. Uh, Venom in the universe, so I don't think they're gonna Venom and Carnage allegedly. Uh, so I don't think uh. I I don't. Eh, I mean, if you're gonna pick a, I personally would have picked uh, Jim Carrey as Carnage. That's just me. But mm. I mean, you know, I I make good casting calls. <laughs> but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, and I I just think he's. Venom is is such a huge character. I think you have to give him and Spider Man like their own, their yeah, own they're movie. their own duo. Yeah, so you can't really just shove him in with the Sinister Six. Like the other guys, yeah, you can. You can open a portal and then it's Doc Ock and fucking all these other Shocker. fucking and Shocker, yeah, and all these other characters and shit. Like the ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really. I can't really properly depict it because when I say I don't see these things happening or I don't think it's going to happen, I don't think it's real. At one point in time, it was out of the world, just impossible to think that Spider-Man was going to end up in the Avengers. At one point in time, you thought it was going to be impossible for Disney to cut a deal with anybody, let alone Fox, Sony, and and for them to properly like bring in all of these characters and stuff like I think because of what Kevin Feige did with um, WandaVision so far, and of course all of the production, you know, staff and directors, producers, writers, and all those other people. Of course, we have to give them their, their flowers, whatever. But I think mm. his his total scope of where he's going with both the uh, the comics, the movies, the TV shows, all of that stuff. Because now that he's head of all Marvel, uh, his direction in which he's going, I'm liking it so far. 
because uh, I don't want to spoil it, but last week's WandaVision really kind of like bust it wide open. Like, <laughs> like it, it really is just like, yo, he might respect uh, the uh, the Fox franchise uh, of of uh, X Men. So I really think mm. I think I really think Kevin Feige is headed in a great direction. I think what he's doing with deciding that Deadpool is going to stay R rated, uh, deciding that he's going to oh, stay God, in the yes. MCU, bro. I I commend. This I'm man. so hyped. I don't think we could have a better person running Marvel. Honestly, I I 100% agree. I just uh, to think that like not even 10 years ago, right? I would have never thought there would be a Venom movie. I thought everyone hated Venom. For like the longest for time, real? he never got a movie. <laughs> Six Spider-Man movies, and they finally make a Venom movie. Like that shit is insane. That's yeah, no, that's uh, so he's long overdue. I mean, there's there's definitely characters I would have expected long before Venom. I I thought we were gonna get a standalone Cable movie, honestly, before we got a Venom movie. Mm. Like if you would have told me that, I would have been like, okay, cool. I thought we were gonna get X Men Origins Magneto before we were gonna get <laughs> before we were gonna get uh, a Venom standalone movie. So, I mean, it's it's cool to see. It's very refreshing. I think it's it's super creative. But uh, on the other side of the coin, uh, we have uh, fucking DC and whatever the fuck they're doing. Oh god. So they're working on an Aquaman sequel right now that starts filming. I think next month. Yeah, next month. I think they start filming Aquaman 2 next month. Um, then uh, Ray Fisher was officially completely cut out of the Z uh, Snyder Cut. So uh, wow. all of the stuff that they're putting back in. Actually, WB, because of this stuff with Ray Fisher, they're complete, completely cutting Cyborg out of the Justice League. So he's, wow. they, they've taken his character out of Flash. They've taken him out of Flashpoint. He's, uh, they're nixing him out of the Batman um, so, I mean, it's, it's, oh, God. It, it sucks because I, as much as I would like Warner to finally do something good, which they, like, when we look at the track record of their movies, their TV shows, their, their politics, their games, all of the stuff that involves, like, creating a bigger universe or understanding what it's like to take a franchise and run with it, they keep fucking up for some reason. Like, I don't. I don't understand why they get a little big headed and then all of a sudden they, they run their shit into the ground. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I definitely disagree with this, this cyborg removal choice. Cause I just, I get that there's a lot of behind the scenes shit that, you know, they're not going to talk about and with Ray Fisher specifically, but it's like, uh, out of everything, man, like, God damn, like he's so, he's so big in the justice league. Like, He's a very later he's a very very pivotal character, man. I I ate. and they could have branched out into Titans or something like a, a, a Teen Titans or just Titans in general type thing. It's just it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, their their decisions that they make over there have been uh, very questionable. Um, I only say that because I've seen all of the stuff that Marvel can do, and Marvel being the giant Disney juggernaut that it is with infinite money and shit like that. Uh, they were able to accomplish so much with limited resources before Disney took them over, you know? Uh, they were able to accomplish a ton of stuff with their characters being scattered. Like, I think it was like 45% of, of Marvel's, like, character catalog was everywhere else. So, you know, Ghost Rider, Fantastic Four, the X-Men were everywhere else. And they still managed to, like bring together the shit that they had and then create the Avengers. So it's like when you see stuff like that and then their TV shows combine, you know, like play into the universe of the of the movies and and the comics and all this other stuff. It's like where's DC's excuse? You know what I mean? Yeah, like what are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> cuz like, they're not doing shit. They really do like they can't even decide if they want to put out another season of Young Justice. And I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was the whole Teen Titans Go and season 6 of Teen Titans like they just can't I I genuinely don't know who's running anything over there. At least we can look at Marvel and be like, "Okay, well Kevin Feige is 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 ca head captain. Like he's yeah. he's making He's doing it. Yeah, he's making outline decisions for Hey, let's start conversations in this direction. This is where we think the comics are going to go. Blah, 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 blah. WB Comics, WB Games, WB Movies, WB Entertainment, like uh, all of that stuff. And then they have the fucking Looney Tunes and all, all of these fucking properties are, have their own like heads of state essentially. And yeah. 
none of those people can get can figure out what the fuck to do with anything like the looney tunes are now bad somehow i, I don't fucking understand that like the justice league is in the shitter although they do have some some bangers i really of course i think uh, the animated shit is really where the 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 like the the teams, they definitely shine on the animated side, like over oh, at DC. But 100%. anywhere else, they're just dog shit. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Their animated stuff. I, I, we've always had this understanding that Marvel had the live action, DC had the animated stuff. Like that was their things, you know. Like Marvel made some pretty good, you know, animations and stuff, but they weren't DC level. Like the fact that you have the Justice, bro. I will never get over this. Ten years ago, if you would have told me the Justice League was gonna come out. And it was going to be dog shit. I would have slapped you in your face. I I would have well, yeah. dead ass slapped you in your face. Especially when you have stories like Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Batman, uh, ba uh, Batman Beyond, uh, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series. Like these are entire universes that they've created on the animation side, but somehow can't put it together in live action. Like I just don't. What? What the fuck? <laughs> like yeah i feel like the batman though with robert pattinson i feel like that's a good start i actually don't mind his take on it at least what we've seen from the trailers right mm. it, it seems like it's a little darker but i i do like the direction in which it's it's going it's different it's different exactly. and and they're staying pretty consistent with it uh it was a little tough to to say that with um Josh Sweden's um, Justice League compared to Zack Snyder's Justice League. So there was, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because uh, Zack Snyder actually said in an interview, I think it was with, uh, da -da -da, I got to pull up the source, but um, I think it was E! Entertainment or something like that or Variety or one of the, one of the big publications. And he was saying how originally uh, for Batman versus Superman, he wanted to dive more into um, Robin's death. And like have oh, yeah. Yeah, and start establishing Nightwing and Tim Drake, and um, eventually go Amy. into a re yeah, and eventually re go into a Red Hood storyline, um, which mm. which is so interesting because when you see Zack Snyder say that he wants to take a different direction and have more of a wide scope approach to telling stories, uh, I I really would like to give him the opportunity to do that because he's the seems to be the only person publicly that has said he wants the w he wants you know the justice league to go into a specific you know like into a specific direction and then yeah. you have um patty what's her name she directed wonder woman um oh god i want to say patty jenkins but i don't think that's it um let's see let me check let me look. god that new wonder woman yeah, Patty Jenkins. You're yeah, right. Patty Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, that's... Oh, God. I, I will say, I didn't like... There's a lot of stuff I liked about Wonder Woman 84, but there's a lot of stuff I didn't like about it. My favorite thing about Wonder Woman 84 is I could see what the fuck was going on. That, that by far, was my favorite feature in the entire movie. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> so I think, th I think that was great, but I think there's a, just, like, a lot of weird stuff that was put in there. I still would give her... I would give Patty Jenkins and Zack Snyder, I would give them 50-50 on, hey, tell a story that you guys want to tell and figure out how to do it together. Because I really don't like the approach of several other of the DC movies. Let's hope Black Adam goes really well. I did like Shazam. Shazam I thought was dope. Um, mm. I think Flash would have been good if they decide to keep um, Cyborg, which, okay. Um, and then, uh, and then of course, I mean, it's not part of the universe, but of course I like Joker, um, which yeah. uh, I'll, I'll never watch that movie again. Like it was so good. It's just one of those things. Like it was like end game. Like I can't, I can't watch end game again. Like once you watch it once, you've just like, all right, I've seen enough. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's it. This is a little bit too much, uh, too much shell shock. So, um, but yeah, you know, they're, they've got a, they've got a long way to go. I, I really think they could, uh. They could they could get this bag, but I I think the amount of stuff that they've gone through at this point, I don't think WB deserves um, a a Marvel like universe going on. They should just keep doing solo projects, and I mean, Birds of Prey was good too, so maybe they'll keep focusing on that. Just focus on villains. I think that's mm. that that might be their approach because Harley Quinn is any stuff with Harley Quinn has been dope. 
the Suicide Squad was a great concept. The movie was all right. Um, so Suicide Squad Part 2 is probably going to be really good. Uh, Joker, of course. Like, it seems like if they want to stick with that dark, gritty stuff, just just make, like, a Waylon Jones movie. You know? Like, a Killer Croc movie would be fucking fire. Oh, I, would lo- I would love that. Oh, actually. my God. Yeah, like, if they want to do these dark, nitty-gritty stories and stuff, tell the stories of the villains. Like I want to see, yeah. I want to see how dark and depressing uh, a Mister Freeze uh, romance movie would be, where it's just like the only thing he cares about in the world is is his wife, and Batman just keeps getting in the way. Like I, I want to see that perspective. Like I'm tired of seeing Batman beating up Mister Freeze and he's trying to save his wife. Like bro, relax. Like come on. <laughs> like I'm just trying to steal a few di- a few diamonds, a little bit of doubloons, some jewels. You know, trying to trying to unfreeze my wife. Like yeah, come on now. She's got a disease, you know what, Batman. We can't take her to the hospital. <laughs> you know what would be actually crazy? Hmm. Like a like a you know you know how in Arkham Asylum, right? You're just like you're just fighting a fucking bunch of villains. Like a movie like that, like a movie where yeah. you just see all the villains and shit, and they just post it up, and they're just like they're looking for Batman. Yeah, they that's want it. him. That's they it. They want him bad. Turns out he's he's uh, on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd, that'd be, be fucking wild. funny. Or they, he- couldn't, they couldn't fucking afford uh What's the, oh god Ben Affleck? <laughs> oh my god! So yes. he's on vacation. <laughs> I think I, I think another uh, approach that would be really cool. This is this is my personal thing, and this is wild. This is wild right now. I want to do um, not like a Suicide Squad, but I want to do a Legion of Doom uh, mm. movie. That would be pretty cool, or uh, a movie where kind of like Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, where all the villains come together and they're just doing bad shit all over Gotham City, yeah. and Batman's not in town. And then by the time you get to the end of the movie, Superman shows up. And it's like, oh, mm. fuck. Like, we did all this and the wrong guy showed up. Like, <laughs> That'd so, be funny. Yeah, I think I think that would be a great reveal ending where they're just, like, fucking up Gotham. And then all of a sudden, you even if Superman's not in it, right, you just see, like, these red boots and a red cape, you know, just, like, in the in the frame, in the shot. And it's just like, what are you guys doing? Like, <laughs> So I think that would be, be pretty funny. That would be a good ending to a movie. Um, mm. if not, I would love to see, um, another, another thing DC does really well, the Harley Quinn animated show. I would love to see Harley mm. Quinn and, uh, Poison Ivy solo movie. I think a standalone movie with them would be amazing. I think that would be yeah, just, just fantastic. Bring Uma Thurman back. She was, oof, mm. oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> then we can, then we can, can, uh, we can do, uh, you know, a whole Sirens thing. Actually, mm. with, what's interesting is with Flashpoint, you can actually make all this happen, which is why they're bringing um, yeah. Michael Keaton and saying he's going to play Batman in The Flash. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, yo, could we bring Michelle Pfeiffer and Halle Berry in the same movie? Two cat women? That's- yo, and then just bring Christopher Nolan. Just bring Anne Hathaway. Mm. Bro, a Sirens movie with Anne Hathaway, Halle Berry. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, mm. Michelle Pfeiffer, Uma Thurman, bruh, come on, uh, what's it, uh, Margot Robbie, Doug, Doug, who, and then, um, what's her name, uh, she plays Black Canary, god oh, damn god. it, she's in, uh, it. she's in Lovecraft Country, what's her name, uh, it's gonna bother me, it's gonna bother me a, a lot if I don't, hold on. Um, I'm just gonna Google it. Hold on. Uh, she's one of my favorite actresses too. Like I'm, I'm Journey Smollett, <laughs> Juicy Smollett's cousin. That's right. Bruh. I think that's her brother. Actually, hold on. Let me see. I forget. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's her brother. So that's going hmm, That's different. So yeah, bring her <laughs> in as as Black Canary dog. That uh, I'm telling you, a Sirens movie would be fire. Be absolute fire. So. But, you know, these things don't happen. So, you know. Yeah, Flashpoint, that's just, you know, you're asking a lot. I mean, I'm Even just, though they've done it 75 times. Yeah, I'm just Animated, asking for a good... Live action. I'm just asking for a good reset, right? So, Flashpoint is going to create a hard reset. And then, after that, you could have the universe where Joaquin Phoenix's Joker exists. Then you'll have Snyder's Cut. Then you'll have... Uh, birds of prey then you'll have sirens then you'll have red hood like like you can then give different directors different oh, movies like i would too. give i would give tarantino a red hood movie mm. that'd be that 
actually that would be kind of fire holy shit that, that really would Woo wee! oh my god that's unnecessary amounts of fire so uh you know i think i, I think that might be uh something good to do that's just that's just my idea but you know what also might be a good idea Making good movies. Making good <laughs> movies or making good video games. Uh, speaking of making good oh, video yeah. games, yeah, we got we got some uh, we got some news to report on this one. Um, CD Projekt Red, unfortunately, has been the victim of a cyber attack. Um, so, what was it, Plank? I think all of their source code. Their source code. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't source you explain it to and... the people? Because I don't. I don't. I don't fucking know. I only read the article one time. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, CD Projekt Red, the creators of Cyberpunk, they uh, they got hit with that yellow background. They they hit, <laughs> got hit with the sorry, we're we're taking your shit. Some some cyber hackers, they took all their shit, all of it. The source code, they've got unreleased versions of The Witcher Three. They got fucking Gwent. No one gives a shit about, but they got it. <laughs> and and they want they want money. They want ransom, or they get or they got documents too. Or they're gonna leak that shit. Shit's getting leaked. Oh my god, yo! Oh, the man. OnlyFans getting leaked. The OnlyFans <laughs> is getting leaked, dog. Your yeah, shit about to end up all on Reddit. That's crazy. They actually left a note uh, in in one of the documents. Uh, it says here, "Hello, CD Projekt Red. You have been ep epically pwned. <laughs> we have dumped full copies of source code." From your performance server for Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher 3, Gwent, and unreleased version of Witcher 3. We also have dumped all of your documents relating to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor relations, and more. Also, we have encrypted all of your servers, but we understand that you most likely can recover those from backups. Uh, if, if we will not come to some kind of agreement then your source code will be sold and leaked online and your documents will be sent to our contacts in gaming journalism. Your public image will go down the shitter even more than people will see how, how your shitty company functions. Investors will lose trust in your company and stock will dive even lower. See, everybody thinks they're a stockbroker now ever since the game stonks, but, you know, whatever. And then these motherfuckers <laughs> had, the, had the audacity down at the bottom. You have 48 hours to contact us. You know what? That's some wild shit, man. That's some absolute wild shit. Who leaves a ransom note? <laughs> like these motherfuckers. Who leaves fans, ransom bro. notes anymore, dog? What did these niggas? You know who did this? The Riddler. It was definitely the <laughs> the Riddler. Said, is you've, got to, you've got to solve all these riddles, and we're gonna leak your documents. <laughs> find all find all of the trophies, CD Projekt Red, and I'll release your documents. <laughs> I hope they find the trophies. That shit's crazy, man. Complete Arkham Knight one on one hundred percent in order to unlock the true ending, <laughs> where we give your stuff back. Oh man, that shit's that shit's bonkers, bro. But I, honestly, a combination of Doof and Smirch and Mojo Jojo did this shit because this mm. I would not have uh, suspected anybody to do this and then leave a a weird ass note like this. Um, it seems a little out of sorts. Um, I, yeah. I, I personally don't fuck with this. I think this is, this is kind of uncool. I think this is really fucked up considering, yeah, it's CD project. Like, you know how mad you have to be at a, at a video game to decide you want to hack an entire company and just like leak all this information. Like you gotta be kind of mad. Like, no, nah, I think, I feel like there's, it's just different. You gotta be different. You just gotta be like, oh, well, you know, they did, they put out cyberpunk and now I just, and now I'm just feeling I woke up and chose violence. <laughs> you got to you got to be storm the capital mad. That's yeah. that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be built from the basement up. You know what I mean? Like this is not this is not normal. I don't I don't know. Like death threats are one thing, but this I, well death threats are different too. Like you got to be a yeah. whole different kind of I don't know, man. This is it's not cool. It's just a video game. Like, let it slide. Let them put the patch out. Because now, uh, the worst part is now they have to, like, kind of move around slower. And so we're not going to get the patches out for this game. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man. they fucking up the DLC. I'm trying to get, I'm still trying to get fucking New Game Plus on Cyberpunk. And they just, this guy fucking around. Yeah, that's, that's like, bruh, come on. You couldn't wait until after they put out, you know, like the, all the patch fixes and stuff. Like, you just had to hit them now, huh? Like, yeah, I just, I want to play the game again. That's it. I need this resolved before April because going into the summer when we have no games 
and oh, CD, yeah. and they decide to drop the free Cyberpunk 2077 DLC. Dog, come on, I'm gonna have the whole summer gonna be lit up. That's yeah. I'm I'm, I'm gonna be really ecstatic about that. So, um, but I think I think this is completely unnecessary. I've never seen such little PP energy. Um, I don't. It's just a video I game, mean, guys. It's just a video game. All. Out of all the things to do, you just you just take everything. It's like, damn, I'm just, why, why are you so upset? What they do to you? My question is, what does this accomplish? Like, what do you what do you get out of this? Like, they're not going to give you the finished product of the of the game. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? Like, nothing nothing's going to come out of it. Like, yeah, you can get a bag, but like, you're you're most likely going to get caught, dog. Like, cyber. Yeah, it, it's not. It's never worth it to to go this far and then leave a note and then be like. Well, on, on some real weird shit, like, oh, you have to contact me in 48 hours. I want this bag. Pay me in Bitcoin. Like, leave the flash drive at this specific place. Like, come on, yeah, dog. Like, it's like... Where do you where do you even see this going? Because if you're if you did this and you're mad about the game, now what? The game's not gonna get fixed overnight. Like, I'm not I don't think that's that's how this is gonna work. That's not how you can't just hold hold these documents hostage thinking oh they're gonna work and finish the game because what do you think they're already doing so i don't know man i don't know this doesn't this doesn't sound like it's gonna end well I, and besides what's to stop this this guy from you know if he gets his little you know 10 funky bitcoins or whatever what's to stop him from leaking that shit anyway leaking it anyway yeah like and then then he could be like oh well i'm not the only person who hacked you so you know I don't, I don't know. And then the comment, the comments are already out the window. So this is, I don't even, if I could go through the comments, that shit is just, is just wild. Some people just have no, no chill whatsoever. So I don't even, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> motherfuckers could have did anything. They could have wrote an angry letter, like motherfuckers were doing class actions. You remember that? Like Honestly, they were doing the class you, action lawsuits because yeah, they didn't yeah. get the game they wanted. Which is like, interesting. That. We didn't. What, none of nobody was filing class action lawsuits when Anthem came out. Nobody was doing that when No Man's Sky came out. Like all of these games that came out with literally no content, and it's like, so nobody's getting sued there. But y'all just yeah. trying to. I, I think they're just trying to make um, an, an example out of CD Projekt Red because they came up from Witcher Three and. I mean, I don't know. I'm, my faith has definitely fallen in CD Projekt Red personally because uh, after The Witcher 3, I, I really would have considered them the GOAT. Mm. But, but considering their timeline of how long they've been working on, CD, uh, on um, Cyberpunk and what they actually got done and the consoles it was intended for, it's like, ah, dog. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. This I is, see that the, the thing is I think they were just trying to they were trying to go the PS4 is still a viable option route and it's just it's just with the technology we have exactly right now it's just it's just not cutting it it's like right, when Destiny right. One had to move like they had a, I think they had it on PS3 and Xbox yeah just cut that just yeah they had to cut that off that in the past yeah 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 and they leave did the same thing the with GTA Five like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't uh. They weren't able to put it on next gen because they were like, oh, okay, well, you know, the previous gen console is really holding it back and, like, we would be done a lot faster and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And I'm like, man, that's that's nuts. And, and I know for a fact they needed one more year of development in order for it to make, in order for it to properly run and be optimized for the PS4 and uh, Xbox One. I know for a fact because yeah. they were nowhere near done when they released this game i think they released it because of public public pressure uh in stockholder and investment investors pressure um sony specifically really really pushing them to get the game out so that way it could be out in time for ps5s um xbox also because they spent so much money on xbox marketing holy shit if you if you thought you weren't going to get an roi on that boy <laughs> i'd be yeah. i'd be mad too i'd be i'd be whoo i'd be heated so yeah but, i don't i always hate the the russian creativity because you people expect a certain thing and you mm -hmm. can't deliver it at that certain time it's always like it's always fucked up when the money is like is like fucking with the creativity. I always hate that shit, especially when it happens in music too. Like that shit is the worst. Yeah, yeah. I can't, 
I can't microwave something faster. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's in here. <laughs> it's in here. I can't turn the heat up. This is a this is a set wattage. I can't turn it up. I'm sorry. This is just it is what it is. And I think uh, I don't know who made the call. I don't know who uh, answered the call and then told somebody else who told somebody else who told the dev team who told you know the interns who told the people who run and get the coffee that hey we got to have this out by next week. It's like we still have a year of development, but we got to have it out in the next six days. Like, I don't know. That just seemed like everybody was going to take an L on that one. I don't. I yeah, don't it's hard to. It's, uh... And because these companies are so private and stuff like that, it's it's like not. I mean, eventually it's going to come out who really made that decision to be like, oh, yeah, let's just go ahead and release it. But I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't seem smart to me. And uh, I make a lot of stupid mistakes, but this is this is definitely something I would not do. So I can't I can't really I can't really fuck with it. So let's yeah, see what else. Just, my bad, my bad. Oh no no you're good. Go ahead because I was I was just rambling. I'm gonna see what else we. Yeah, have I was just gonna be like notes. they just. It, it's hard to 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 make that jump right to please the fans. And you gotta you gotta please investors, and you gotta you gotta do it at the deadline, and mm-hmm. it, it's not. I wish game development was that simple, but it's it can't. I I definitely agree. I I would say the same thing for like YouTube videos too, like creating content is kind of like that way, um, especially if you're working with other people or like even if you have like these expectations on yourself, which uh, I have found to be really really challenging as far as like being a content creator. Um, so yeah, I can only imagine how difficult that particular situation would be. Um, but I was having an interesting conversation the other day with a friend of mine. Um, I was talking to him about actual like game development and how technology has gone even further forward. And it's like, how is it that games have gotten more expensive to make? Uh, because you know, you're obviously investing money in new technologies and more manpower and stuff like that. So that's, what's costing the price of games to go up, but we haven't figured out a way to streamline it. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. like we figured out a way to cook food faster. We figured out how to way to build cars faster or make cars go faster, get to our destinations faster and stuff like that. But we haven't figured out how to render these graphics faster. You know what I mean? So it seems yeah. like as technology in, it, like goes further and further, it increases. You would think the development times or like the manpower hours would kind of go down, right? Uh, I, I mean, you would think so, right? Because I mean, I don't better... know, <laughs> I don't know, but like it just seems logical to me. Like that's that's just that's what seems correct, I guess. Yeah, that's always that's always rough. There's always extraneous circumstances, right? Because there's, especially in the the cyberpunk case, right? They had to, they had to scrap development. If I remember, if I recall correctly, they had to scrap development or whatever, or they had to scrap uh, like certain parts of the game, mm-hmm. or they had to restart development. One of those, they did that, and then yeah, I think it was like three years in. I think it was like in 2017. That's when they started officially actually uh, working on the game. Uh, because, uh, the, oh, it got leaked that the 2018 build at E3 was actually, uh, just fake. Um, the whole thing, it was, it was literally just basically like an MP4 file that somebody was pretending to play. Um, (laughs) which you would think like, Hey, we have to impress investors. Like, let's just use a fake. Like we'll, we'll build this game in a couple of years. Um, so I think they, they set out to start in 2014, but having to scrap it, scrap it for 2017 and then have a fake build by 2018. So they really had like two, three years of development. But I don't know. That still doesn't feel like an excuse because like some of these other games be coming out like every, every fucking year, like, you know, and they, they come out mad trash. But I mean, some of the other ones come out pretty good. So I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's weird. I feel like the <laughs> technology is there for them to have gotten it done. I just feel like maybe they probably got caught up in like the idea process. That's, that's probably what I think is, is, mm. is, is pretty close was uh, cyberpunk was turning out to be such an ambitious game. Like the amount of things that you could or could not do. And like your decisions, every small decision mattered type of type of thing, you know, like that's how they were marketing it. So I assume these were all things that they probably wanted to put in the game. They just couldn't 
like the time constraint wasn't there to make sure it worked so yeah i i wish like things were were as we're getting into this more modern era right as as parts parts for pcs parts for consoles are getting better i wish that that we could just leave all that shit behind i know that ps4 wasn't so long ago but we just need to leave some of that shit behind like i just a ps4 is basically what a fucking toaster is right now it's, right, it's right. so bad that's how we felt about the ps3 and we were like god damn like grand theft auto can't run on the ps3 <laughs> <laughs> so and then here we are fucking complaining about fucking miles morales running at 60 fps on the ps5 and that's so crazy to me yeah it's it's interesting because it's fucking wasn't wasn't a ps4 uh spider-man in in 30 30 right yeah yep. yeah sure was that's that that didn't even seem that long ago i don't think it was it was a couple years ago though i think it was right? that, i think that was 2018 2018 2019 yeah I think yeah so so you, oh. oh my god you remember that feeling when when you had seen spider-man for the first time and you were like oh my god right? oh my <laughs> yo that was a moment that was that was hard that was yeah that was a exactly. hard moment and then it took me forever to finish the game but by the time i finished it i was like yo this was honestly i think spider-man ps4 was probably one of the greatest games i've ever played like it's it's such it, a good oh. game they so. did so much to to elevate that game to the next level i i love that game i can't I don't think I could ever see superhero games ever, like, the same ever again. Oh, yeah. I don't think I could see adventure games the same ever again. Because this was just, like, from the ground up, Insomniac built this amazing game. Three years. Three years it took them to build that game. Three, you know, we'll round it up. Four years. So then when you have something like Cyberpunk and you're like, ah, uh, y'all were working on this for how long? <laughs> like... <laughs> You sure? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then they they flexed so much. They were like, oh, people like this Miles joint? All right, bet. We're going to make a whole game out of it. Like, and still built that in two years. So, yeah. I two games in five years. And meanwhile, you got CD Projekt Red coming off of, coming off hot off of Witcher 3, bro. You start smelling yeah. your own shit when you're that hot, and you're considered like making <laughs> like the best studio ever. You've you've made one of the greatest games of all time. Like you smelling your own shit. You like yeah, that's right. And then the next project gonna be bigger than that. And you just talking it up for three years, knowing damn well you ain't got no money in your pockets, knowing damn <laughs> well you ain't got no job. You still living in your mama house. Like, come on, yeah. bro. Like this is not. It's like those guys who got the. They got the, the freshest fucking clothes, but they still living in the basement. Yep. And they got roaches in this shit. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And then next thing you know, they hacking CD Projekt Red Files, you know, <laughs> storming the Capitol type shit. So I get it. I get it. I get it. So, you know. Bro, but, what uh, a weird world we live in. Honestly, as it's, it's so strange because as the world changes, bro, I feel like, not that obviously I'm getting older, but like there's just certain things that I kind of tolerate or I understand like right off the bat. And then there's other things where it's like I know I don't understand, but I know it's none of my business. Like yeah. there's – once again, I, I'm going to keep using this joke forever. This storming the Capitol shit, dog, like I – seeing that happen, I was like, yo, I don't believe it. But I know what's happening. <laughs> like, yeah. like, this is this is clearly not my issue. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I think everyone saw that that storm in the Capitol shit and like, no one's dead yet. That, yeah, that was that, the first reaction I had. No one's dead yet, and then someone died, crazy. and I was like, oh shit. Okay, my bad. Yeah, that that was actually pretty crazy for me, man. Because I I I really was thinking. I was like, yo, anybody else were to just walk up with ill intent to a federal building. Oh, you getting put down on site, bro. They don't the government don't play that. Like you can't walk into government facility. Honestly, you know what? St we need to storm Area 51. I think I think those <laughs> are the I think I think hear me out, hear me out. I think the same people that were trying to storm Area 51 realized that wasn't going to go well. So yeah. we going to storm this other building next year. <laughs> So, I, listen. I, Maybe we should stop storming shit. Maybe we should keep it, you know, a little more low-key. Stay in the house. 
Yeah, 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 the house yeah. is good. The keep house is great. On, yeah, keep your mask on. Stay in the house. Wash your hands. Wash your nuts. This is not. <laughs> these are basic things. It's not that. It's not that. Hard. Yo, you want to know something that actually bugged me out? I was what? at. Uh, I was at a restaurant. This was a couple of weeks ago, maybe like a couple months ago, and I just remember this guy having to complain about washing his hands. And like, that shit made me mad nervous because then I started reminiscing on all the times I've ever used a public bathroom and I just watched people go use the urinal and then leave and didn't wash their hands. That shit, oh my that God, people shit. are weird. This is why we have Corona because of that shit. Honestly, but. bro, I, first of all, this Corona shit is wild because I can't believe we just used a raw dog air. Like this is just, <laughs> this is just insane, man. Like I've seen I videos. I got a face condom. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing videos of like, of like pre-COVID when we used to just walk around Disneyland and like take subways and shit like that with no mask on. And I'm just looking and like people are touching the railing and like, I'm just like, <laughs> Ugh, like I can't believe we did that. We are some nasty motherfuckers. Look at that. Ew. You ain't got no hand sandy in your bag, bitch. Like <laughs> Yeah, that sh yo, COVID has changed my life in the worst way. Every time I see a video without a mask on, I check the date immediately. I'm like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> when was this? <laughs> This was yesterday. What Bro, the fuck? I'm watching older <laughs> movies on like Netflix and like Amazon and stuff, right? And I'm seeing yeah. people, people like greeting each other in the movie and they're like shaking hands and I'm going, oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. God. You're Did not he, six feet? Bro, he touched his hand. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> oh no. I just, uh, man, I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's just, this is a yeah, time period. Is... I can't believe I'm living history right now. Like, I'm living somebody's history class. Like, somebody's yeah. history assignment right now. I'm living it. Oh, my God. my I can't. This is going to be so weird, like, for, like, either the next generation or maybe, like, the the younger people. Like, they're going to have to write reports on this shit. How is it like living in COVID? Like, <laughs> it's so insane. <laughs> the pandemic so you, of 2020. Like, yeah. That's, that's, that's nuts. That's absolutely. So you were really breathing before COVID? <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> was the air different? Yeah, it had to be. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. This shit is it's so different. But you know what, man? I I think for me, um, and this is speaking personally, I know a lot of people get kind of bent out of shape when I talk about stuff like this, but um I think even after COVID, after all the vaccine shit, after all everything that's about to happen, right? Or everything that is currently happening. After all it is, say COVID disappears, right? Forever. Zero traces. Mm. No, no, no cases, no nothing. I still will probably go out in public and wear a mask. I, I, I feel like that's the wave. Because you know during flu season, uh, people in Japan, they wear the mask. Right, 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 right. I feel like that's just the wave. Like that's a, that's how we got to be on in America. Like just just wear the mask if during flu season. Shit, when you just out and about by yourself, just wear the mask. Yeah, I just I don't see a reason why not. Like my motherfuckers really used to just sneeze out in the open. Like hey, that shit is insane. And then motherfuckers would sneeze in their hand. Like that 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 bothers me because that anytime I ever see somebody sneeze in their hand, I'm like, yo, your parents really failed you, huh? Yeah, like, like I can't, <laughs> bro. I have a crazy story. I was uh, there was you remember in like the beginning of COVID, like no one was wearing a mask. It really wasn't that serious. Right, right, right. I remember it was a Saturday. It was like such a long time ago. It was a Saturday, and I had allergies. And I started looking around like a crackhead. I was like, "Did anyone hear me?" <laughs> I sneezed once, and I looked around. I was like, "Hello, you see me?" Oh my god, that's funny. no one looked at me. I was like, "Oh shit." I guess it's not that serious then. Uh, that was a different time period. <laughs> Shit, you can't even sneeze in your house. Somebody be like, hey, you good? Where <laughs> hey, you, you been? Mask on? Where you been at? <laughs> hey, let me check your temperature real quick. Oh, you okay? <laughs> that shit is, uh-uh. I'd be scared to cough. Like, I'll go to a oh restaurant, and you know you know when you're drinking water, and you, and you like, breathe in some, some water? Yeah. And you just, <clears throat> and you got the little, you got the little, the fifi stuck in your neck? And um, you got the little, the little, got a little tickle, and you be trying to get it out, and you just, 
<clears throat> and motherfuckers yeah. looking at you crazy, like, hey, you good? Like, they start pulling out tape measure. It's six feet, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> one of them uh, throws you a thermometer. Yo, you good? Hey, hey, chief, go on and put that in your mouth, man. It's clean. <laughs> We might have to escort you off the premises from six feet. Hold on now. you This outdoor dining, you about to be dining out on the street. Shit. So, um, You're going to be dining in the car. Yeah, man. I was like, no, I'm, I'm choking. I'm choking. Right, 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 right. Sure, you choking. Okay. The only thing you're going to be choking on is choke your ass outside. You got to go. <laughs> so, man, it's, it's, it's tough. And, like, people were just staring at me. Like, I, I first of all, I knew I was good. I knew I was yeah. 100% good because I was black. Instantaneously. <laughs> I knew I knew I was fine because I was like, oh, well, you know, if the government going to tell me to put on a mask so that way I don't get other people sick, I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. That's no big deal. Throw, throw on a mask, whatever. Um, and I know I had been doing it forever. I washed my hands. I keep a hand sanitizer in the bag, in the car. Um, and I got mm. that hardcore shit. That shit that's rubbing alcohol and aloe vera. That's, that's mm. all it is. Like, you just smell... It smell like vodka in the bottle. I mean, it tastes like it too. But I mean, you know, <laughs> shit, it's good with a cocktail, I guess. But that's how I knew I was good, cause I was I was following the CDC procedures and all that shit, man. I I was I was nervous. I was real nervous at one point in time, cause I did get sick for like fucking mad long, like two weeks, and like it was it was probably the worst sick I've had in like forever i really thought i was going i was going to go out and i got three covid tests and i didn't have covid and i was like so 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 a flu so pneumonia just struck your boy like like out of mm. nowhere like i just got hit with it and um man you know what it it makes me nervous cuz even like just getting sick regular like you know you have a little cough a little sniffle just you know stuffy nose or yeah. whatever you wake up and you had the window open or something or it was draft or it was too cold and uh Man, it's just you feel guilty. And like for me, because I I you know, I work my nine to five or whatever, I had to take two weeks off of work. And I didn't get paid. That's, yeah. And I was That's like bad. I was like, yo, rent coming, like this this gonna be kinda tough. So I just decided if I get COVID, I'm still going into the office, man. <laughs> <laughs> I still gotta go. I need this bag, bro. I need this check. Hey, someone gotta pay these bills. Honestly, you know and they they didn't they didn't give me no type of sick pay. They didn't even pay me for half days. Like mm. I I was just I was just stuck. So I couldn't. There was nothing I could do, man. There was nothing I could do. I did get a lot of content made though, that I didn't post. <laughs> bruh <laughs> it's honestly it's a it's sometimes it's a challenge man sometimes it's a challenge to even like come home and be in the right mindset okay so this is the biggest challenge i'm having right now i know we're switching up conversations now but um the biggest challenge i've had is my most opportune moments of like productivity is in between 8 a.m and 2 p.m which is okay, you know, prime time hours for me. Like I'm jotting down ideas, like I'm coming up with sketches and skits and jokes and all sorts of stuff and like ideas for videos and podcast topics and stuff like that. Boom, 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 boom. No big deal. I get home twelve hours later, I get home seven o'clock at night. I don't be trying to do nothing. My eyes hurt. I don't want to look at a screen. I don't want to look at anything called YouTube.com. I don't want to do shit. So it's kind of hard forcing myself to be in a creative space and mm. uh and still have like this like there's been days where i stay home from work and um like i'll work from home or something and i'll get like four or five videos done like like nothing and then script like eight or nine of them i'm like all right this is cool and by script i mean start like yeah just start writing something so development phase yeah 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 exactly exactly we, we put putting the ingredients together getting ready to start cooking something um yeah. So, you know, it's been um, it's been tough, man. Uh, COVID has been a uh, very, I honestly, and I don't wish ill on anybody, and I'm sure somebody's gonna have an issue with me saying this. I kind of wish it would last a little bit longer because my life is not fully together yet. I used this oh. last year as an opportunity to like to call an audible and like get get my finances together. All right, they're giving me some free money. Don't 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 don't. Let's go. We're gonna move out. We're gonna get a new spot. Uh, we're gonna live in this rat trap of an apartment i was like but it's gonna be mine though it's cool it's cool and then uh i'm gonna start making content every single day boom 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 boom, knocking this out like i i knew i had one year to make it work i was like they're probably gonna 
like come out with some type of vaccine or something and life is going to flip back to normal. So this is my opportune moment to like full time make content every single day. And I didn't. And I, I, mm. I, I really feel like I flopped right there. Like that was that was a moment when I should have been coming out with bangers. I should have been coming out with viral mm. shit. I should have been coming out with jokes. I should have been putting sketches mm. on TikTok. And then by the time I was doing it, it was it was like November. And I was like, fuck, like this. Is the, I mean, it did take me like six months to get settled into my apartment. So that was kind of that was kind of yes. t- uh, a tough break. But I mean, you know, I'm just really trying to get into the flow of it. And it's been a real challenge. Mm. So is there like it? So for you, right, when you're in in your mental headspace, is it just video ideas? Do you think about the future? Do you think about what you can do now? Like what? where is your head at when you're making a video? Or making um, videos, excuse me. So uh, I'll answer this in two parts. Um, so my my headspace when it comes to video time is in multiple spots. It's in what's the video, what's it about, how do I perform it, mm-hmm. how is the video going to perform when once it's posted, the aftermarket stuff that you have to do, the pre pre market stuff. Um, is that can I make a TikTok out of this? Can I make an Instagram post? Can I do this? Can I do that? How else can I move this so that way I can reduce the amount of hurt I take when I get no views on it? <laughs> that's mm. that's basically. <laughs> and then I have like a whole chart over here on, on my whiteboard. So I have three whiteboards. I have one for like finances, one for content, another one for what the fuck? Do, oh, for like acting stuff, right? And for like producing. Yeah. Um, Often two out of three of these will line up and they'll do the, they'll say the exact same thing on it. But, um, I'm often stuck somewhere in between coming up with the idea, executing the idea. And, um, how do I capitalize on the idea? Those are usually the three things that kind of gyrate around my brain for a while. Um, and, uh, coming up with videos sometimes is easy. Other, other times it's not. Um, Mm. because I have been blessed with the ability to get to 7,000 subscribers, which I feel like most people struggle to get a hundred. Uh, most people struggle to get a thousand. Um, but I'm really figuring out the scientific way to build instead of coming up with like weird gimmicks. And I talked about this on uh, yesterday's video. Um, I never felt like super secure, uh, Mm. about my performances and stuff. And I'm never really like my true 100% authentic self whenever I'm filming, filming a YouTube video. Um, which is why I even use the example, like I'll be joking around in the discord or something and I'll, I'll, I'll have like fire joke after fire joke. And I'm like, yo, why can't I be this funny in my YouTube video? Mm. And I realize it's, it's a level of, uh, comfort and insecurity. And it's a, it's a, it's a tough wall to break. And sometimes it's 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 not those two two things. Sometimes it's a little bit more one than the other. But now I'm getting to a point where um, I kind of I, I have to force myself to not care in order to mm. get make sure to get the project done. And um, I also suffer from the same thing that you suffer from uh, uh, perfectionism. I, yeah. I need a video to be absolutely right. I need it to be look exactly like the way it does in my head. I need it to sound this specific way. I need it to be edited this specific way, which all of these things are great. But sometimes you have to realize that the you don't possess the ability yet to do that. Like you don't mm. like just because you want to put fire and effects and all sorts of cool shit in your video, you don't. You haven't made enough videos to understand how to even start that process. So you can't you can't expect to have a nearly perfect or, or not even halfway perfect video without putting out tons of shitty videos first to understand how how the process of how you got there. So like everything's been been steps for me and I feel like now that I've reached this particular step uh, where I understand the science, I understand the metrics, I understand the numbers, I understand metadata, I understand what thumbnails work, I understand uh, my editing software better, I understand making thumbnails better. Like all of these things I had to learn over time and they would build up eventually. And now that I'm in my creative bag, I can use all the science shit that I learned. I can start applying this to all the, all the dope shit. Like I can start taking this stuff out of the bag. Like I've had it for mm. 10 years now. Like it's it's time. And now that insecurity is gone because it's been replaced with with um knowledge. 
knowledge and and it's a challenge now because now I'm also seeing that people who have been on the platform a little bit shorter than me I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and name drop because I've, I've felt really jealous by a lot several several homies passing me up Yaya Zypher uh, and then like two other homies who make OnlyFans content, so I'm not really about to put them out uh. like that. Um, <laughs> and I, I've watched these guys eclipse me, and I was like, mm. at one point in time, I think I was like 5k past Yaya, and he was like, Jay, you doing it like this, that, and the other thing, blah blah. blah. No, I think it was like 3k, and um, I was like, oh yeah, man, you know, I'm just trying to do whatever. And I think I took a six month break because it was right around the time me and Heavenly had this you know, disagreement or whatever. And then he ended up moving and all this other stuff. That six month period, I came back to a channel that was now killing itself. So now I have to figure out how I can breathe some life into it. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got to dig out of this hole. Like it's a six foot hole. Now it's a grave and I got to, I have to figure it out. And, and fortunately I understand the science part. So I have to figure out the fun parts and put those in my videos more often Mm. and i could only understand that by making videos for 10 years so that was because i wasn't you know it only took 10 years because i wasn't doing a video every single day i think the whole purpose of doing a video every single day is not just to i mean on the light side obviously on you know when it comes to numbers and stuff it really helps with youtube's algorithm because they love new channels um they love to kind of like push that stuff slightly um it also helps you practice. Mm. And that, that, that practice is really going to teach you that, hey, it's okay that your video is not perfect. It's, it doesn't need to be because you only need to entertain people for X amount of time before they hit subscribe, before they hit like, uh, before they decide they want to join your Discord, before they decide they want to show up to your live stream. Like, it's about the entertainment first. And mm. um, if, you're, if you're worried about trying to be entertaining, you're definitely not entertaining. So, um, that's, that's the long answer. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I was really worried about being in my bag too. Like I was really worried about numbers. Like I still am honestly, like every time I lose another subscriber, every time I upload, I, I, it hurts, but that's, I understand that's out of my control. And that's only because I didn't make an entertaining enough video to get two people to replace that one person sub that got deleted. So it's, uh, it's 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 a uphill battle. That's what it feels like all the time. It feels like I'm just trying to, at least for me, uh, I'm sure for other people, it's probably a slope, you know, just going straight down. Mm. I'm sure for other people, it's flat. Um, but for me, it, it feels like pushing a giant boulder up a hill. And um, the, the more stuff I do, the lighter the boulder gets. This shit is still heavy, though. So, you uh, know. I understand. So, uh... I know this is probably uh, more of a future question, but mm-hmm. when will you? When do you think you personally will know that that you're refined? Like you're a refined creator. Like you're making you're making content that you're satisfied with, that is also gaining traction. Not necessarily like you gaining subs, but it's doing well enough for your expectations. Mm. That's that's a tough question because you never. You never really reach that point because your expectations keep changing based on your previous actions. So you can judge yourself and grade yourself on your previous videos all you want to, how they perform and stuff like that. But you know, you know what videos you like and you know what videos you don't like. So if you, uh, there was a, an Attack on Titan live reaction I put out a couple weeks ago. I loved it. That's, that's been the only video I've loved in the past like year or so that I've made. But Mm. so I have to take that and use that as my example to elevate like, okay, if my next video is not as fun, uh, putting together, making, putting out as this video, I know I did something wrong. So it's, you never really get to a point where you're like, yeah, this is it because you're never content as a perfectionist. You're never content. You know there's always yeah. something that you could fix, something that you could change. And that's that's the the journey I think you have to do is you have to create a checklist uh, for yourself. Like if you put out a video and you think certain things are shitty, take notes on it. Like 
that's that's what I've had to do. Like, oh, my audio was bad on this one, or uh, I should have added this edit, or I should have did this, or I should have did that. And you use those notes towards applying towards your next video. So if you want to put in like a funny meme or something at the beginning, you're like, okay, I know for sure I want to have this joke in here, even though uh, off the I'm off the cuff. The ref, rest of the video, I want this joke to be in there, and I want this sound effect, and I want this, and I want that. And the harder you focus on that one piece, you can write it down. You can have it in notes and da 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 da. And then so that way it's fully prepared. So by the time you get another idea for another part of the video, you're like, oh shit, I want I want this joke at this particular time and da 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 da. And so you you jot that down. Next thing you know, you have two pieces of this of this giant video. You know, this ten minute, eight minute video, whatever you want to make. Uh, and you have two really good banger jokes or you have two really good mm. you know pieces of content right there and you're like that's what you're proud of and that's what you strive for everything else is kind of like a dog it's up in the air that's a science that or the rest of that is science you you're balancing science and creativity and uh, at, if you can't figure out one you got to go for the other one so you're it's const, it's a constant balance act so you're never you're never really going to be okay with it uh but you have okay. to be okay with that so yeah yeah not sure if so, that answered the question, but I, I feel like yeah, I got yeah, close. Yeah, no, I, I understand where your point of view is. Yeah, I feel like I got close on that one. But <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I will say content creation is not for everyone. Um, but uh, this year, I've learned that sometimes it's not just about you. Sometimes you have to have a, uh, as stupid as this sounds, sometimes you can't do everything yourself. Sometimes you yeah. have to have a team. Sometimes you have to uh, have a, a counterbalance. Like you could be the idea guy, but you never get ideas done. You know what I mean? Because you're like, oh, I don't know about this. Uh, I, I can come up with ideas, no problem. But it's like executing. So you need somebody that'll sometimes if you can't learn to do it, you need somebody that only executes. That has, mm. you know, sometimes they have issues with ideas, but they know how to get started. They know the process. They know to, how to move something. They know how to aftermarket shit. So sometimes you have to have a complimentary, you know, sense of uh, how to get shit done. The, okay. Yeah, but the biggest balance with that is when you're by yourself. When you're by yourself, you you try to hold yourself accountable. And for me in particular, I can't do that. I can't hold myself accountable ever. Yeah. Ever. I'm really bad at it. So, <laughs> so like the absolute worst. <laughs> so um, it's a process. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the whole thing turns into like after a certain amount of time, you kind of get the flow of it. It gets easier. Sometimes, you know, when you're going to burn out, you know, when you're not going to burn out, you know, when you need to take a break. Uh, after a while, it just gets easy to predict these things like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't see a, a challenge. Oh, and you also have to be nice to yourself. Be, be okay with not hitting a deadline. Be okay with not getting the views that you wanted. Uh, because it's, it's a slow burn. If you go into it thinking it's going to be a slow burn and you blow up, then great, cool, take off. But if you think it's going to take you 10 years to hit a million subs, Hey man, it's gonna take you ten years to hit a million subs. That's it. You're gonna mm. hit a million though. Like I, I, I don't think there's a doubt in my mind. When you regularly create content, even if it's bad, somebody's gonna like it. Some, yeah. somebody will like it. It will end up in front of somebody. Even though, no matter how big of a pawn YouTube gets, and no matter how many people are starting YouTube channels, podcasts, anything like that, it only takes a certain amount of people. A very, very small small amount of people to get you to your wildest dreams that's it mm. it it and that's we're talking like a small percentage of just the population on youtube not even the population of people that go on youtube once in a while or the few people that go on your twitch and want to donate a hundred dollars to you like these are all mm. these are all different aspects in which you can experience when it comes to creating content so Thank you. Uh, that actually helped me a lot. I just, I, I have one more thing, mm -hmm. just, just one more thing, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Do you think that, like, for certain creators, that complacency and like, in the type of co content they make, is it? Do you think that's like a possibility for you? 
Like, you, you get it, like, let's say you, for you specifically, like, you'd like to do, oh, wow, I said that shit. Okay. You would uh, enjoy <laughs> <laughs> skits and, and stuff. Uh huh. Do you think there's a point where it's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to make this a skits channel, or you get complacent with the, the type of content you do, and that's what's getting you views, and that's what's, that's what you're enjoying, right? But it's also mm. something you, you may be milking. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I did. I can answer this in multiple parts. So I did think that way two years ago um, when I would upload a video and it instantly would get five to 700 views and I would get 10 to 50 subs a day. That was like, I knew I hit a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to be a real YouTuber. I'm going to be a real content creator. I need to branch. But then that six month break happened right as I was like hitting a stride. So that fell, I fell into a place of not complacency, but I was okay with the growth that I was receiving for the type of content I was putting out. Um, and then to answer the other half, no, I don't think I will ever reach a point of complacency, complacency or being okay with uh, just making my channel a strictly one type of category or type of content. Um, only because my ambitions are far bigger than YouTube. I think mm. YouTube is really just the catalyst for me to, and I've said this millions of times and people have heard me say it. I think YouTube is really just a catalyst for my talent until I can take it elsewhere. Um, and it's where I can put the things that I'm good at and the things that I like to do in front of an audience that wants to see it until somebody can give me the opportunity to basically like make it on my own financially. Um, mm. to give you a specific example, uh, I'm just going to go out the window on this and I, I hate talking about myself like this cause it, it really upsets me and it makes mm. me feel uncomfortable because I don't like talking about myself objectively, but I'm capable of doing it. So, um, I have on one of my whiteboards over here, I have a diagram of being a full-time content creator. I have a diagram of how to increase the amount of money I make every month. And I, it has like strategies and stuff up here. And then I also have a chart for how to be a full-time actor, director, producer. That particular chart is probably the most, it's probably the strangest chart I've ever, like anything I've ever worked on. Because it combines the stupidity of, and yes, I mean stupidity, the stupidity mm. of creating shit on YouTube and utilizing content in order for other people to give you the opportunity to do shit. And this is why I say I'm like overly ambitious and I'll probably never get this shit done. So in order to be a full-time producer, director, actor, content creator, you have to put out more projects. And when you put out more projects, it gives you exposure. And then, of course, other people can shout you out and stuff like that. But majority of, of this on this third one that's just acting, pr directing, and producing is networking, which I didn't do a whole lot of in college. And I went to film school. And, like, there were people who got huge time jobs because they were failing classes, but they were networking. And I was not networking, but I wasn't failing classes. My idea mm. was if I'm paying $50,000 a year to be at this school – I'm not about to go to this party and I got homework tomorrow. So that, that's where I fucked up. Uh, I didn't realize there was supposed to be a balance there. So now I'm kind of 10 years later, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm trying to figure it out. Mm. So the more projects you do, the more people want to work with you. So you start networking. Once those people want to work with you, you gain more experience. You use that experience in order to book more jobs and more projects. And so vice and back and forth. So then you use that experience, you get another job, you gain experience from that job, you use that experience in order to get another one. So cool, back and forth, back and forth. In between all that, you do more projects, you network with more people, you do more stuff on social, You people start talking about you, word of mouth, like everything's an ecosystem. So I don't think I will ever be tired of the ecosystem because I'm going to constantly run this rat race. Um, mm. Eventually... I would love to turn my channel, my YouTube channel, into a production company. I want, I have, I have connections in order to do distribution. Well, not anymore because movies are no longer a thing. Going to the movie mm. theater is no longer a thing, so I have to figure out how to how to fix that. But my distribution platform is now YouTube. So if I wanted to make a movie, and I wanted it to be in theaters, well, okay. Normally, you would have to write, direct, produce go through all of that shit, make your movie, post-production, all of that. Once it's finished, then 
you give the distribution rights to somebody else so that way they can put it in their movie theater and then cut a deal with them, like depending on concessions, box office, all that other stuff, all that other business junk, right? Mm. Considering our distribution platform is YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatever else, literally everything on the internet is a form of distribution. So you'll never get tired there. So now now I have an infinite distribution source and I can do and put out as much as I want. So there's no way I'm going to get tired of that. Mm. Um, even if it's like a small little two-minute project or something like that, then yeah, I got to throw that out there. It's, it's good practice. Um, I also see myself being a producer. Um, so seeing a lot of my friends wanting to do stuff and them not having the opportunity to do so because nobody will give them a chance. Um, that actually has always bothered me. So I would love to create a platform where I could do that for people. So that's also going to be something where I never stop creating because I want my platform to get bigger. So, uh, you know, if I'm putting out a video a week and it's getting 4 million views, that's 4 million people that get to see, you know, my project or whatever. Mm. So as long as that continues to grow or if people continue to give a shit about my opinions or give a shit about the content that I make, sketches, skits, vlogs, whatever the fuck, music videos, pornos, doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, then I'll continue to do it. So, um, but th that's just, you know, what I want to do. Uh, my ultimate goal, though, to kind of like jump ahead, I guess, because you didn't ask this question, but uh, my ultimate goal is essentially build something that helps more people than than anything like i want to be a visual representation of um like when you when you say making it out the hood people want to be a basketball football player you know singer dancer rapper blah 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 blah. i mm. want i want the option to be filmmaker i want the option to be youtuber i want the option to be comedian i want the option to be uh, content creator, like uh, these are entrepreneur, like these are more options that, you know, when I was, when I was younger, didn't really see it. It's just like, I, I knew I was probably going to play football. Um, but then I broke my fucking hands. Um, <laughs> that was, that was pretty crazy. Um, and I wrecked my shoulder and I knew I was like, well, there's already a slim chance of going to the NFL. Like there was not, that was not a thing for me. Um, and then I was like, damn, like I'm not good at music. So that's not, that's not going to happen. Even though I did professionally produce music for a couple of years out of college, but that's, that was mostly a science thing and not a creative thing. It's just like being mm. able to tell somebody like being somebody's assistant and being able to tell them what sounds good and what doesn't. And they're like, oh yeah, that's good. But when it came to like making beats for myself, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking do it. Like that was not, yeah, right. So I, I really had no other option. And because I had no other option, I have to run this thing into the ground, man. I'll probably be 80 years old with fucking 50,000 subscribers, probably. <laughs> that's that's how long it's going to take me. But I'd rather do that than, you know, just get to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm okay. So, especially now that I'm seeing, like, more um, influencers with, like, bigger houses and stuff like that. Like, a homie of mine, he makes Minecraft videos, and he just bought... A house over in Venice and it's a five bedroom house and he's got a Tesla and all this other stuff and he just makes Damn. Minecraft videos bro and I'm just like that could be me that, I'm, I'm I, not that it could be me but like he decided to I, I always look at stuff a little bit deeper he decided to spend his money on that because you know he's building a family he's gonna have a kid soon like you know what I mean like so he needs I, I guess he needs a five bedroom house on the beach. I don't, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> but he decided to use his advantages for his opportunities. I yeah. don't necessarily have those advantages yet, but I would like, I mean, if I had enough money to buy a $4.2 million house out in fucking Malibu with five bedrooms and four bathrooms, a jacuzzi and a pool, but nobody's counting pockets, then I would probably <laughs> use that money. <laughs> I would probably use that money to help to help my homies produce projects. I would probably invest that money in people instead of like companies and stuff like that. Like that's something that I've always told my friends. It's like, yeah, like if you're putting a project together and you feel passionate about it and that's what you really want to do, yeah, I don't mind helping. Like I don't, I don't, I want to see the work ethic. I want to see you doing something. I don't want to just invest my money in game game stonks like 
that's mm. it's whatever i mean money is money but if if i can't provide an opportunity to make other people's lives better it's like what am i here for so mm. but that's just me. i respect that that's i respect you know, that i don't really have uh any other options i've never really seen it any other type of way probably because uh and this is me getting super meta okay this is therapy time <laughs> uh probably because i want to be the help that i wish somebody had given me so mm. I would like That's to, uh, yeah, I would like to help somebody else, which is why I'm always offering like, hey, you need me to do this for you? You need, you need help with this? Like, you need that? Like, I got you. Like, I, I'd, I'd rather go out of my way to, damn, yeah, no wonder this is why I play fucking tanks in every game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go out of my way to make sure other people succeed before I do. So that's, that's just. Just that's kinda, dope yeah it's just kind of you definitely extended is. that hand to me and i appreciate that oh man it's it's nothing i mean we just getting started man i but there's there's a ton of stuff i want to put you on and i want to show i want to introduce you to and show you but um the years have made me cynical so i mean if you don't do it then you don't do it i'm not gonna badger you about it i spent all mm. of 20 2016 2017 and 2018 and majority of 2019 trying to get my friends to like hey you should make a youtube channel hey you should start a podcast hey you should do this you should do that now these same five six seven people are complaining to me how they don't have a job during the pandemic they don't have any anything to do they've read all the books in their apartment they're they're broke they're doing this they're doing that and now i don't and they're like can can you give us some advice can can you please like you know now i don't want to tell you nothing I'm like, yeah. nah, I, I gave you four good years, man. Like like Obama, I gave you four good years and I'm out. Like <laughs> Yeah. But I mean he was eight. But you know, whatever. Anyway, the the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is now the only thing I can offer is like, hey, listen, make an OnlyFans. That's it. Like, <laughs> I, I legitimately told that to a friend of mine to multiple friends of mine actually. Uh one of my friends, she she was like like, hey, you know what? Do you think do you think I could borrow twenty bucks? Blah 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 blah. Like just until Friday. And it was Monday. I was like, so if 20 bucks is going to get you through the week, I'm like, yo, you're, you're on some, you're on the edge. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I was like, listen. Looking rough I, for you, King. Yeah. I was like. And or queen. I, I was like, listen, sis, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not, this is going to make me sound crazy. I'm not in the business of just loaning money. And she's like, no, no, no. I'll pay you back. I swear. Blah, blah. I was like, no, I'd rather just give you the money and expect it to not come back. And she's like, yeah. oh, that's really nice of you. I was like, but. I'm also not in the <laughs> not in the place of giving money in 2020. Like that just was not where I was at. Um, mm. Cause I went from a very unfortunate circumstance to now I'm like, I'm making more money than ever. Don't tell heavenly controller, up. but, the, but you know, I gotta, I gotta pay a couple of people. I gotta pay some debts real quick. Um, but no, really like all jokes aside, I was telling her, I was like, listen, I don't want you to think I'm creepy or anything like that, but you're going to have to either start an OnlyFans or you're going to sell me some nudes because I got to get something out of this because I'm not just going to give you free money. Like, yes, you've been my friend for a couple of years, and like, but also you're one of the same people I told you four years ago to start a fucking podcast about, you know, whatever the fuck, you know, scratching your ass and sniffing, like, but you chose to not do it. Like, you, you looked me dead in my face and said, yes, I'm going to do it every single time. And I gave you resources. I gave you assets. I broke my fucking neck so that way you could you could like start something. I even brought you on on multiple live streams. Got you a little bit of cloud. Like it's not much, but like the seventy people I did bring to your YouTube channel, to your Instagram or whatever, you just took that and didn't do anything with it. Mm. And so as I was explaining this to her, she was not necessarily open minded about it. And then I was like, look, you can either sell them to me or you can start selling them online on OnlyFans. And best believe I'm still going to lob you this $20. So either way, I'm seeing your titties. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, what else are you going to do? Because, you know, your, your, your little funky job that you had is shut down. Sorry. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not about to just do something that doesn't benefit me in any way. And she's like, well, I just don't want you to see me like that and blah, 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 blah. Bitch, you act like you trying to impress me. Like, first of all, I'm not <laughs> fucking you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your man. I'm not your boyfriend. I'm, I'm not nothing to you. Like, I'm your homie. Like, first of all, if you can't trust your homie to see your, your ass and your titties, it's just like, is that even your homie? 
Mm. That's that was it. That was my logic behind it because I was like, it's not like I'm gonna turn around and go sell this shit. It's not like I'm gonna turn around and just put it in the Discord and be like, yo, homies, look at this. Nah, it's just I need you to learn a valuable lesson that you're not gonna get something for nothing. And I I gave you plenty of something. So, you know, it is what it is. I know that makes me sound a little creepy that I was creeping on my friends, but I mean one of my other friends, I mean, honestly, one of my <laughs> other friends, I told her, she was like, she was like, yeah, I just, you know, like need a quick loan. She was a completely different circumstance. She, she had some money. And I was like, look, um, I could let you borrow some money, but I could just give you, she was like asking for like 50 bucks or something like 20, it's like a measly amount of money. I was like, I'll give you a hundred. If you send me a picture of your titties and like this and that and the other thing, she was like, all right, bet here's my cash app. And I was like, all right then, cool. That that was a solid hundred dollars. Now she and I, honestly, now I I feel like she she and I have a deeper friendship at this point because now she's talking to me about all types of shit that we ain't never talked about before. Like she's mm. sending me memes and shit. I was like, we don't even talk like this, ma'am. Like the, <laughs> you was not in the squad that gets memes. Like you were not you were not on the newsletter of getting memes. You just weren't, and now she is. So you know, I mean. It's, it's different now. It's, yeah, it's big different. And so I, I respect her a little bit more for that. And now whenever she asks me for some cash, she's like, oh, do you want me to send you a little? I'd be like, nah, girl, it's cool. It's cool. Now I don't even, <laughs> now I don't even care. And we're also at a point in our friendship where she's just like, hey, I'm talking to this guy. I'm about to send him these nudes. What do you think? And this is before I'm even, I'm at work. <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I come back to my phone. I'm seeing, that's a whole ass on my phone. And I'm just like, oh, these are fire. Cool, cool, cool. Send. And it's like, <laughs> what what else do I say? This is my homegirl. You know, I have no intentions of fucking this chick. I have no intentions of being with this chick. But I I was bored. I was bored. I was the horny the horny hit. And that was it. So, you know, but I just uh I just think quarantine and, and creating content and all this stuff, it's, it, it relates so much together in this weird ecosystem. And uh, you can't do one without the other. So, mm. you know, I've, uh, I've even made my own OnlyFans. That shit was rough because being a single man, who knew nobody just wants to see just a, open, just a pickle. Nobody just wants to see that <laughs> shit. So, no one wants to see Pickle Rick. Yeah, so. honestly, it's just not without Morty. Nobody wants to see Pickle Rick without Morty, and I don't. I don't have no. I don't have no Morty. So, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that answered some of your question. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't. I don't have anything else to add, man. That was. Uh, that's pretty much it. Content creation that was has solid. been. Yeah, I mean, content creation has been what I'm trying to do. The other day, I had to. I had to really sit for like four or five hours, and. Uh, really think about like is this something i want to do because content creation comes with a whole load of stuff that people are not prepared for uh it truly makes you an entrepreneur it truly makes you a zero or 100 type of situation um and you're relying on yourself and so i have to put certain barriers in between me and that portion of giving myself accountability so I can't I can't make a podcast by myself. I've already I've already figured that out. I did that yeah. I did I did forty some odd episodes of Canon Culture by myself and I finally it was just like yo, I folded. I needed if I if I couldn't reach out to Heavenly Controller and get back on the Heavenly Podcast and we start doing that, then I was like, yo, I gotta find I have to find somebody that has some gaming expertise. I have to find somebody that's, you know, got some jokes, somebody that's you know, smart and is really going to understand nuance and stuff like that. So, and I've tried a couple of people and so far you're the best blank. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. This is, this but is, we've awesome. been, we've been, I've been fucking with you forever now. Like it's, it's been a long time. Yeah, It's, so. it's, it's about time to put you on bro. It's, it's about time. Oh, we gotta, shit. yeah, we gotta get you out here. Even if you only streaming for what one, once a week, twice a week, making a, how much one video so here hard. and there. What, what, so far, what do you think is hard about it? Let's have it's not that it's it's the lack of content from video games, right? And maybe even the lack of fulfillment, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe I'm just getting old, right? At the ripe old age of twenty, I'm just Ooh, maybe it's over for me. That that is I a turning just, point. That is a that that was a turning point for me at twenty. It really was. 
it just the games don't hit the same. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, I could play a game for like an hour, and that's it. It's just like fuck. Mm-hmm. And, and they it never just don't will. hit the same. They never will. Uh, because <laughs> now what you've done is you've trapped yourself in in a creator box or an idea mm. of a creator box, and that's why I took the last two three weeks off because I was watching anime, and I, I think I was started watching Log Horizon three right. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yo, I have to make a video out of this. And then Attack on Titan was coming on. I was like, I got to make a reaction video to this. And then ReZero Season 2 had already started, and I was like, fuck, I got to make a reaction to this. And it got to a point where that perfectionism and, and anxiety of like having having to make something within a timely manner, they started colliding. And mm. I I kind of got stuck. And I was like, "Fuck! Like, I can't, I can't make any of this because it's not gonna be good quality. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be great. I haven't made a gaming video in forever because that's how I feel about gaming now. Like, The Last of Us Two flopped for me. Cyberpunk flopped for me. Uh, the last couple of games I, I that I bought flopped for me. And so now I've gone back and I'm playing, I'm playing Jack and Daxter." Like, yeah. I've gone back to, like, I downloaded the whole thing on my PS4, and I'm, like, I'm going back and I'm playing good games. Like, that's that was my, like, cure for it. And you're never going to really reach a point of, like, something's good enough. And so you kind of have to bite the bullet on that one, and it's probably a very painful pill to swallow. Um, mm. Where you just have to be okay with not having content. This is why I was hammering to you, like, Destiny is popping right now. So, like, if you wanted to make Destiny content and... And because it's such a, it's such a field where if you're a beginner, there's tons of content to consume. Like if you made yeah. a beginner's guide to Destiny, twenty season twenty twenty one, right? You yeah. would get a lot more views on that than if I did a reaction to Attack on Titan right now. You would get way more views, I guarantee you, mm. um, because your 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 pool of players that are interested in starting Destiny because a new DLC just dropped. So you have tons of people who are coming back to the game and tons of people who are suddenly interested in the game. So you could do that. Yeah. Once you start doing that, then the numbers, I mean, it might be like 50, 80 views first thing. And we've talked to Super Jet about this. Like he's missed mega opportunities uh, when it comes oh, yeah. to like Resident Evil and stuff like that because he decided he wanted to go a different way or didn't want to be seen in a certain light. But once you get to the middle of your trail, nobody cares how you started. Yeah. Like, like people are looking to me every week. People are like, where's the rest of the Assassin's Creed videos? Like, Bruh. <laughs> I started my channel making Naruto videos. Like, how did I end up on Assassin's Creed? You know what I mean? Like, nobody ever asked yeah. me for Naruto videos. So, I, I, I really think that just getting started is where you need to be at. I think you need to be okay with dropping Destiny news updates. I think you need to be uh okay with pivoting and trying to diversify at the beginning because if you don't you get stuck in this rut and you kind of run with it and you be you make that your race instead of you you racing around the events if that makes any sense because mm. even even my best friend tony like this guy is really dedicated to making destiny 2 content and now that he's started like branching out i think he did like netrunner and he did something cyberpunk and he did something else He's really kind of like diving in on this Destiny thing. And he's like hitting a couple of videos that have like 10, 15, 20,000 views, stuff like that. He's got one that's like, I think at a hundred, at like a hundred and some odd thousand views. And I'm like, bro, like you're, you're, you're doing it. Where's the rest of yeah. it? Yeah. And he's, he doesn't have the necessary marketing par- part down yet to where he's like creating clips and streaming and, and advertising himself. So he doesn't have that part because, uh, he's still in the same mind thinking that we were back when we first started our YouTube channel together where it's like, Hey, if the content is good, it's going to get shared. But that's not the situation that we operate in anymore. You know, you gotta, yeah. make, you gotta make TikToks, You gotta make Instagrams. You gotta do this. You gotta do that, which sounds like a lot, but if you plan it while you're making it, it becomes a lot easier. So, okay. Yeah. Like it's like we were talking about earlier. And when I, started clipping your stream randomly i was like these are really good notes for starting in destiny 2 these are really good notes for uh why destiny 2 is is you know like a bad game or something like that or maybe you could do what what i used to do and make the thumbnail and then make a video matching the thumbnail 
that you want to use. Like that's also a really good thing. Or you could work your way backwards. You could set your microphone up, hit record and talk for two hours and then just take like 15, 10, 10, 15 minute clips of you talking about a specific thing and just uploading that raw, you know, like these are, these are all things that exist. You want to talk about the weapons in Destiny 2. You can do that. You can compare yeah. a, another way to pivot. You can compare Destiny 2 to Borderlands. You can compare Destiny 2 to Genshin Impact and other free-to-play games. You know what else is a free-to-play game? Apex Legends. Apex Legends just dropped uh, at Season 8. The new character sucks. Like, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so many different avenues that you can hit and it's better to do it at the beginning because if you try to do it later you gotta realize that you're getting a thousand views on every single video but the second you make a video about something you actually care about that's not that specific thing you're gonna find you only get like 200 views you get 100 views like so and that's that's a harder pill to swallow because you're later in the game than at the beginning okay because at the beginning, you're getting 50, 10, 15, 20, 50 views, and you're seeing, you're, you're diversifying, you're seeing views coming in from everywhere, from every category, every angle. And as you grow, the water, the water lifts your boat, the entire boat. But if you have holes in your boat because you decided to make an Assassin's Creed video that now has 110,000 views, and, like, <laughs> and, and people are expecting more Assassin's Creed content because they see it on your channel, but you're talking about anime... Uh, that's not really going to dilate with a lot of people. So it's yeah. a... And that's what I'm dealing with now. That shit is hard. And I have this weird YouTube bug. It'd be something... It'd be different if I made content and every single time I put out a video, I gained a subscriber. But every time I upload, I lose 10. So it's like... How do you... How do you strategize around that? So, you know. But I'm, I'm basically just getting shit off my chest and talking about myself at this point. But I think... <laughs> I think you'd be... I've always said this many a times. I think you'd be an amazing content creator. And I, I really think getting started is going to be your hard point. And I think getting past that first hundred per subs, that first hundred subs feels extremely difficult. The second, the first thousand is, is probably the biggest, hardest climb. In between one to five, it's also a climb. And then in between five to ten is also a climb. So mm -mm. you're, you're going to struggle. You have to be okay with just putting out what you have and just, just being cool with it. That's it. You can't do anything else. It, it, the thing is for me, right, it's always been, it's not necessarily like the ideas, right? Because I could, I could throw out an idea and it, it'd probably do okay. But it, I think the worst part for me is like the mindset. Mm. Like I got to, it's hard to get into the, the content creator mindset for me. Because I, I have so many ideas that that on paper would probably be pretty good, but mm -hmm. just in my head I'm like, okay, well I could I could do it seventy five different ways, but which one do I really want to do it? Doesn't matter, pick one. Yeah. That you you're 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 stuck in coach mode. You're a coach, not a player. And you mm. have to be very careful about that because you're a coach that either wants to be a player or knows they can be a player. So your, your catch up right now, your, your thing, your hurdle, your barrier in front of you is how do I want to approach this video that I know would do well? Mm. And honestly, this may sound cheesy, but you just got to do it yourself. You have to be yourself, turn that mic on. Hey, you, if you want to get cheesy, I think starting cheesy is a really, really good way to start. Hey everybody, this is such and such. Like, subscribe, comment, blah, 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 blah. Do the whole YouTube generic shebang at the beginning. Because trying to be different is for bigger YouTubers. Being mm. different is, is for people who have earned the right to be different. You got to be real generic at the beginning a little bit. Because you can add your own flair, of course. But there's certain things, there's certain aspects that you have to have in mind. And that's, that's one of them. It's putting out content regularly regularly reminding people to like and sub comment uh telling people to follow you because for some reason it's second nature to me if i like somebody that's producing content i'm gonna follow them on social i'm gonna you know go to their twitch i'm gonna do all that stuff that's second nature to me to most hmm. people they'll be like they'll get to an end of the video and they'll be like yeah i kind of like this guy and then just go straight to another video instead of like oh before i go to this next video let me like 
Let me make sure to subscribe. Let me make sure to turn on the notifications. Like you'd, you'd be surprised how many people need to click like that. They need to hear it in order to do it. So mm. once again, you're, you're just stuck in this spot of how do I play the game? And it's like, yo, coach, just play. That's it. Okay. Like it doesn't matter how you do it because you can refine it over time. Over time, that's that's really gonna make mold you into what it is that you're trying to be, you know. And you'll never be like any other YouTuber. You could you could strive to make videos like Afro sends you, or you can make videos like uh, Rhyme Style. You could do whatever. All of these guys have different ways that they make videos, but they started off at a certain point until they reached a point of earning, and then now they just develop into their own person mm. or into their own content creationism thingy i guess so yeah you know uh one of these days if i if i ever get to fucking what i think is to be successful let's say i hit like 100k or something i'll have my own flow of how i do videos i minimal amount of editing editing i don't i don't like editing i just don't i mean i love it but i hate it I hate to sit and just clicking around all the fucking listening to the same part over and over and over again. I'm just like, nope, nope. Yeah. Uh -uh. <clears throat> Not for me. So I try to make my content to the best that I can so I can edit it on one pass through. If I can't edit it on one or two passes, then this video is scrapped. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this shit is not great. So, and then there's other videos where I know like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do multiple edits. I want sound effects here and there. I want to do this. I want to do that. Obviously those ones a little di different story. So, but I think for you, uh, and then I'm going to give you a game plan too. Cause I don't like giving advice and then, you know, not giving a way to execute. Mm. Uh, I think for you, you should just keep streaming and you should practice on that. Uh, you know, stream your two, three times a week. If you want to do one time a week or whatever, and then practice just randomly recording yourself. Just not even paying attention to it. Like make it a hotkey on your computer for like OBS or whatever you use. And just yeah. hit the button and then just let the recording run for a little bit. And, you know, talk a little bit in the stream. Talk to the chat. Then after a good maybe 10, 15 minutes, turn the recording off. Play a little bit more. Maybe like an hour later, turn it back on. See if anything happened. And just like ignore it. Like, that's going to be a hard part. It's easier said than done. But, like, just play the game. Just be you. Talk to the chat. I think, honestly, you get your best work when you talk to the chat. Um, yeah. Then turn it off. And then watch it back. And if it's something that you enjoyed, then you know you had something. You know you're on yeah. your way. You made a step. And I think making the step is better than trying to leap forward. Because then okay. you'll fall and you'll bust your ass. Because, you know, you weren't ready to leap. <laughs> <laughs> so baby steps baby steps yeah, yeah, yeah big baby steps if you can man big just, just <laughs> go on and go go ahead and do it because honestly it's not going anywhere anytime soon and if it is you want to at least be able to tell people that you tried because i can't yeah. tell you the amount of people that are starting youtube channels now like oh my god the amount of people that i went to high school with that have found out that i'm a fucking youtuber they're just like oh my god you're so brave that's so cool i've always wanted to do that and blah 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 I'm like, huh, weren't you really shady in high school? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, um, you know, and th there's still like a couple of people that kind of shade me, but I, I, I try to like ignore it. That's sh it's, it's still painful, but like, I mean, I, I put that into my videos and now I just talk shit about them on stream. What are they going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> so, you know. Uh, and I, yeah. I can't get, I can't be, I'm not liable to be sued because I use the word allegedly so much and I don't, I don't tell people's names unless, you know, it's like a specific thing that we're talking about. That's like, Oh, Tom Holland said this today. Like, you know, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, but that's pretty much it, man. Those are, that's my words of wisdom. Uh, I don't know if you have any more questions, but I, I got full of answers. So no, I think that's it. I think that's good. I, uh, I, I got, I think I, I need to reflect a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right, I think right. that's, that's, that's the, that's the next step for me. Yeah. And like, if anything, kinda, kinda if anything, man, it. you don't have to start creating content immediately. You can do that shit in a year if you really wanted to, but you can make a lot of content in a year. Uh, um, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you want, you know, you don't have to start now. You could use the, you know, if you choose 
if you choose to be the co-host uh, of the podcast, you know, you can do whatever you want every every week when we come back. You can you can talk about whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Use that as your platform to be like, oh, so I've you know, you don't have to make videos. Make me make the videos for you. That's it. You can do that. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Of course. So, um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching today's uh, episode of the podcast. You guys can find my man Plank down in the link. Uh, link in the description below. This is how I know I'm tired. Uh, so <laughs> we've reached a, a, we had a pretty good podcast. I, I, I actually really enjoyed today's. Um, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. You know, I, I always appreciate talking to you, Jay. It's, uh, it's always, it's always thought provoking and we, we always get shit done. Hey man, that's, that's all we do here. We do it for the cash, the clout and the culture, man. We are trying to start a conversation mm. in order to move all these things. We want to move all the filler out of the way. Canon material only. Let's keep it, uh, simply straight, straight to the manga, baby. That's it. Story content okay. only. So, um, but with that being said, make sure to, to like today's video, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new, if you guys are listening to the audio version, if you're listening on Apple, make sure to rate this podcast five stars. If you're listening on Spotify, Hey, how's it going? Um, <laughs> um, but with that being said, that's pretty much it. We will see you guys next week. Make sure to keep it canon.